guys welcome back to my channel how are you doing i hope you are doing great if you are new my name is lazy so i bring this gist for you guys i add it together including the stitch and bring it here question for white people specifically white people who would consider themselves to be allies and my question is is when these police brutality videos come across your social media do you watch them and why or why not the reason I'm asking this question is because I was at work when the Tyree Nichols videos got released and I was in the middle of having this conversation with my manager about privilege and allyship. So he had mentioned that he doesn't want to watch the video and I, as a black person, responded with, I don't like when people watch these videos. I don't like that black people's bodies are spread around the internet as trauma porn and used as entertainment because at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's entertainment for y'all. I don't watch them as a black person because number one, I don't need to. I already know what is fuck is happening. I don't need more awareness. Number two, it's triggering, it's traumatizing as fuck. And number three, I just find it disrespectful. I don't understand why y'all are so happy to exploit black bodies when you never do this with white people. I feel like this hour long conversation because he brought up to me as a white person who would like to consider themselves an ally. He felt like it was his responsibility to sit in that uncomfortableness and watch that video because he's never gonna have to experience that in his life. Right? We just had this back and forth conversation about what is expected of allies or for me personally, what I expect from my allies. That's why I wanted to pose the question to the general public. What do y'all do when you see these videos come across your timeline? Because is it something that you guys feel like is your responsibility to sit in that uncomfortable and watch it? Or if you don't watch it, why do you not watch it? I personally am always just gonna be on the side that if I don't feel it's necessary to use black bodies as trauma porn. And if you're to the point where you don't care about black people, unless you're watching them be lynched, then you're somebody who's just past help. And it's not our responsibility to help you get there. I just wanted to open the floor for discussion. Y'all know I don't never open up my social medias for discussion with white people. But I was curious to see where other white people who would consider themselves allies or people who are learning and trying to take action, um, where your thought process is on these videos that come across your social media. I consider myself an ally of marginalized communities. And to answer your question, I do not watch police brutality videos. I think they're disgusting. I think pr police brutality is disgusting, obviously. Um, but I have watched one, um, George Floyd's video. He, I had never seen one before coming from a small town in Kansas, um, with a class of 24, only one of those being a person of color. I didn't know what police brutality looked like. Um, I had never seen it before. And so it was more to get an idea of what we were dealing with um, as a country. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm glad that I watched it, but I don't think that I would have been able to grasp the severity of what police brutality looked like coming from an all white town basically in the middle of Kansas. Um, it's not something that we came across. So yeah, I hope that answered your question. I will answer any more. I have multiple things I would say. I don't put raisins in my tater salad. You feel me? I don't think salt and pepper is the only thing I need when I cook. I use multiple seasonings when I cook. Not all white people can't fight. I will really put the paws on you. We really out here thugging. I will send you to Jesus. Not all white people love country music. I don't want to listen to a song about breaking up with a bitch and my dog dying. Some white people like me stay blicked up, not just with a pump in the trunk. You feel me? I keep that chrome for your dome. Number headshots. Finally, not all white people think Eminem is the greatest rapper alive. Just saying. Watch this video. If you watch any video, if you have to watch mine or the original, go watch the original. Okay, now, I appreciate the conversation and the question and the opportunity to answer it. So for me, in my house, we do not participate in sharing, watching, partaking in, um, or adding to the commodification of black pain, trauma, and death, period, end of story. But it wasn't always like that. It took me many years of learning from black educators, anti-racism and decolonial educators, before I began to understand and see where, um, it, you know, capitalism and white supremacist delusion, to quote Sonia Renee Taylor, and um, 
and the commodification of pain and trauma and the way that algorithms work and all of that before I started to realize like, whoa, okay, I am understanding this. But initially when I started out and I started like intentionally watching these videos, I did so because I believed it was my duty as a white person who was endeavoring in the fight for black lives. Like I thought I need to bear witness to this so that I can have a better understanding. Pretty early on, I understood that sharing it to get other people to give a shit was not right. But I don't know that I had the ability to articulate why it just, it didn't feel right to me. So anyway, I appreciate the question and that's my, that's my answer. I'm just sitting in my car and I was just kind of like being appreciative of black culture and just the things that I've grown up um, and tradition and all other black people I know, you know, that they do. And it brought me to this question, though. And it's three questions that I have for white people. And I'm serious. I really want to know because I don't, I got white friends and don't learn them do this that I know of. Don't you call an ass. But one, do white people shout in church? Two, do white people play spies? And three, do white people have family reunions? If I have any white people that are following me, could y'all please answer that question for me? Thank you. Hi. White person here. <laughs> and number one, I have not been to church in a very long time. I'm pretty sure if I walked in, it'd be struck by lightning, catch on fire, something else spontaneous. But no, we did not shout or do anything other than just politely say amen occasionally. Uh, secondly, spades. Yes, they do. My mom loves spades and dominoes uh, and has whole groups of friends that do those things, along with Sudoku, which I don't understand, and Mahjong. I don't know. Uh, and then thirdly, yes, we have family reunions. I don't anymore because my family is drama. Uh, but growing up, we had family reunions until I was like in college. And some of the older folks started passing away and the younger kids didn't really take up the mantle. But we did have family reunions every year, uh, once a year, usually in June. We'd all get together. It'd be food, cousins, kids, everybody, uh, and drink and get stupid. And basically uh, just kind of celebrate being together, being from the same family. No big deal. Hope that help. So I personally do. Uh, watch those videos. Uh, I haven't seen the Tyree Nichols one because leading up to that video's release, uh, there were a number of uh, black creators here on TikTok saying, hey, white people, don't watch this one, don't share it, don't show it to other people. And, um, you know, when it comes to knowing the best way for white people to be allies, you're the expert, so okay, I'm not going to watch this one. But unless you know the black community is saying hey don't watch this one i'm going to watch it because i was you know raised in white culture and i've come to learn that a fundamental aspect of white culture is white ignorance um you know white culture is a bubble it is an echo chamber and it is extremely difficult for anything outside of that to break through. It was so bad, um, as far as my experience goes, that I genuinely didn't know that racism still existed in America until the death of George Floyd. You know, the way that I was raised, uh, the way that I was taught in school, and the uh, ignorance of my family and peers throughout all my life and even some of the outright racism of certain family members, which I didn't know was racism, um, I didn't know that racism still existed in America, except for a few, you know, aged stragglers who, I mean, they weren't going to be around much longer anyway, so yeah, everything's fine now. And it took the death of George Floyd for me to realize that one, racism still exists in America, two, it's never not existed. Three, it's way, way worse. It has been way, way worse, and it still is, than they led me to believe in school. 
and I don't want to be a part of that anymore. I don't want to be a part of white ignorance anymore. So when I see these videos, and not just the atrocities that are being committed against people of color, but just all of the oppressed groups, I watch them. Because not watching them, not seeing what's really happening, feels too much, now that I know better, like the willful and deliberate uh, cooperation with white ignorance. And I don't want to be a part of that and I don't want to spread it. Okay, I have a question for white people. What were you taught as a child or what do you teach your children about how to interact with cops? Like if your child was ever pulled over by a cop, how do you tell them to interact with them? Because I've been told 10 and 2, pull into a lit area if it's dark outside, stay calm, make sure that your license and your registration are on your dashboard. If you have to reach for something, make sure you announce it and make sure that that something is already seen, right? Lieutenant Nazaro did all of that and still got pepper sprayed and guns drawn on him. So like, what do you do? Just inquiring. So I love this. This is awesome. I think it's great to start a dialogue. So first off, thank you for doing that. Second, I don't know where this stereotype came from because I use a lot of seasoning. I love seasoning. Salt and pepper, maybe just for like a really nice prime cut of steak. But like when it comes to food, spice it up. Seriously. Like this is our spice cabinet. We have more sauces up there. Y'all, I don't get why people don't use flavor. If you're only using salt and pepper on your food, you're missing out. So this was actually the thing that made me realize that white privilege exists. And I, I know it's, trust me, I'm more embarrassed for myself than you ever will be of me. <laughs> but in reflecting in that kind of situation, I realized that at no point in the time that I was being talked to by my parents or by my friends or by adults in general, was it ever known to me that things could possibly escalate to the point of violence? Now, I can't speak on behalf of other white people, but I can tell you that for me specifically, the only thing that was ever taught to me was how to get out of the ticket not how to make it out alive. And that is how I know that I have white privilege. That alone should be enough for me to understand that I have white privilege. Please don't forget to leave your opinion down below what you think. And don't forget to subscribe, turn on notification anytime I upload, you will be notified. Stay blessed and bye-bye.